And up at the top of the board, I think it says power. It's how to get things done quickly. Um, that's the basic idea of power. It's a, a measure of the rate at which we exchange energy from one form to another form or from one place to another place. Um, and so for your purposes, power is actually really important in terms of how you live your daily life. Uh, for physicists and engineers, too, it's a usually pretty important idea, but uh, but still subordinate to this basic concept of, uh, of energy. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that uh, that concept, that uh, uh, analogy <clears throat> uh, that introduced with uh, with energy, where an energy is kind of the currency, the money of, uh, of physics. And so uh, up here, there's uh, one of those syllogisms um, or analogies from your uh, your testing days. Uh, if energy is money, um, power is like your salary. It's like your wage, how much you make per day, per week, per month, per year, uh, for whatever it is. Um and of course, that uh, that gives you an idea, uh, an intuitive idea of what power really, really means. Um, a more powerful person, like your boss, uh, can get things done more quickly than than uh, perhaps you can. A more powerful country can do things like uh, launch a rocket to the moon <clears throat> more efficiently, more quickly than a smaller, less powerful country. Um, so the idea of power, that uh, intuitive sense we have of power, uh, this uh, ability to get things done and get things done quickly. Uh, corresponds pretty well with this idea we have in physics of what power means. It's uh, the idea of transferring energy, once again, from one form, like uh, food, um, into uh, uh, the energy of motion of your body, or converting uh, the, the chemical energy stored in a, in a, in a, in a bomb uh, to the kinetic energy of the explosion, of the particles in the explosion uh, that are moving away, or from a uh, oil or gas or coal or something like that into electricity. All these are different ways of converting energy from one form uh, to another form. And uh, we, once again, use the word power to describe how quickly it's happening, um, and how much energy is being transformed in a given amount of time. The basic unit of power in physics is the watt, uh, W-A-T-T, uh, but we pronounce it W-H-A-T pretty much watt. A little bit different, maybe. Um, a watt is a joule per second. It's just a, an amount of energy transferred, transformed, moved around uh, in each second. And the symbol for it is just a big capital W. Um, you'll also see a horsepower. That's a unit of power, which is uh, legally 746 watts. Um, uh, but uh, the book, the textbook, introduces a nice little trick, which is to think of that as just about one kilowatt. Um, the reason that works is that uh, what we're looking for in physics, especially the kind of physics we're going to do in this course, is not the super right exact answer, uh, like I said in the very beginning, but rather a good enough answer that helps us move forward uh, beyond the particular problem we're looking at at that very moment. Um, we want to figure out if something reasonable or not reasonable, something possible to do or not possible to do. And if we keep our minds focused on that, on what, uh, on what the not the exact result is, but the good enough result, then our brains get a lot less tired uh, with the mathematics and we can focus on the real problem at hand. So we'll do an example of that um, in a little bit. Um, some of the units of power you'll see uh, more typically are the kilowatt, which is just 1,000 watts or 10 to the third watts. You'll see the megawatt, uh, that's a million watts or 10 to the sixth watts. Or you'll see even a gigawatt, uh, that's a billion to us watts or 10 to the ninth uh, watts. Um, and so these are, 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 are units and ways of designating units, units that uh, I want you to feel comfortable with, that you need to feel comfortable with if you're going to understand what's going on in uh, the rest of this course and to some extent in the rest of your life. Um, the kind of unit of energy that you saw uh, last time in the unit about energy, uh, the kilowatt hour, means that uh, 1,000 watts, uh, that's 1,000 joules per second, are being transferred or transformed or something for an hour's length of time. And that can happen that a lot of energy is being transferred very, very in a very short time, uh, for a very short, at, for a very short length of time. Uh, so that amount of energy is what we're talking about in the kilowatt hour, or it could be that uh, a very small amount of energy is being transformed for a very, very, very long time, a very small amount of energy per unit of time for a very long time that might add up to um, a kilowatt hour of energy. Um, the kilowatt hour is just a convenient unit for um, for the power company to know how much to charge you for the energy you've purchased, uh, knowingly or not, from uh, from them. Um, and uh, that purchase price is usually in the order of about 15 cents. So it's uh, uh, by itself a small amount, 
But if you lose a lot of kilowatt hours, it becomes a pretty big, a pretty significant amount of, uh, of energy. Um, so to give you an idea of what a watt is, uh, how much energy it is, how much energy per unit time, I should say, that uh, it is, I'll give you some examples here. The book does a version of this too, but uh, here's the one I've come up with. It's, there's actually some overlap. Um, a few watts is what your phone charger does. And so uh, it's a little bit of a surprise, I think, to some people how little energy your phone actually uses, your, your cell phone. Um, if you think about uh, it's about three watts, uh, sometimes four, sometimes two. Um, but if you had your, uh, your phone charger on for an hour, that would be three watt hours of, uh, of energy, okay, which is a, a pretty easy thing to conceptualize. If you had it on for an entire day, that would be about 75 watt hours of energy. And even to call that 100 watt hours of energy, it would take 10 days of charging up your phone. And if it takes 10 days to charge your phone, you should probably get a new phone. But 10 days to charge up your phone uh, with a kilowatt hour of, uh, of energy, if that's what it took. And that 10 days of plugging your phone in would cost you about 15 cents from the, the power company. So even though it seems like uh, you might feel like your phones use a lot of energy, in real life they don't. Um, if you compare that even to an LED bulb, uh, the LED bulb uses about 5 to 10 times more energy than, than your phone does, um, which is, once again, kind of kind of crazy. And this is, of course, just as it's charging. Um, if you compare that to the incandescent bulbs that the LED bulbs replace, well, they used uh, another five to ten times as much energy. Um, and so the savings in energy from an incandescent bulb to an LED bulb are really significant. Um, and that's why even uh, a person like me, who's kind of ornery and, and old-fashioned about some things, um, I'm willing to use LED bulbs to light at my house, provided they work. Um, even though the bulb itself is more expensive, the savings in energy uh, is really uh, is really very significant. There's other advantages, too. Um, but uh, we can talk about this later or in person if you like. Um, the, uh, of course, this extra energy is not uh, because the incandescent bulb is brighter. Uh, it's actually heat. The amount of energy that's coming from the power company, this uh, 60, 80, 100 watts, uh, is still the same. Um, only with the incandescent bulb, only uh, a few of those watts, 10, 20 of those watts, are converted to, uh, to light. The rest of that is uh, converted to heat. So, of course, if you grab an incandescent bulb uh, that's been on for a while, your hand will burn. If you grab an LED bulb, it won't. Uh, and that's kind of a neat little uh, neat little trick, uh, uh, a nice thing if uh, you're the kind of person that tries to grab bulbs for some reason. Um, moving up the, uh, the scale, uh, a person who's just sitting around doing pretty much nothing still gives off heat. Uh, and that heat amounts to about 120 watts. Um, and you can actually calculate this yourself. I might have you do that on a piece of paper sometime. If you think about um, how many calories of food you eat, that's a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of joules. And then over a day, well, a day has a certain amount of hours and seconds in it. Um, so you can calculate this exact number and figure out how much your resting power is. Um, compare that, though, to a person who's uh, running from a bear, um, a, uh, a, a healthy person who's uh, fit and trim uh, can generate about a kilowatt of power for a short amount of time, for a few seconds. Even I could do that uh, not too long ago. Well, long ago. Um, but if you uh, drive your car away from the bear, which is a little smarter, um, using a lot more power, about 25 kilowatts for your, your car. If you think of a power plant, a typical power plant is about 800 million watts. Um, a nuclear power plant is usually a little bit more powerful, about 1.2 gigawatts is uh, typical for a, a power plant. The textbook kind of fudges that a little bit and has them both be about a, uh, about a, a gigawatt. But uh, in, in practice, uh, conventional power plants are a little bit smaller in power than a nuclear power plant. Um, but that's uh, not the thing we want to really get uh, focused on too much. A um, very simple thing to think about with power is that uh, if you've got uh, a low power thing, it's like a slow burn, uh, like a person just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Um, if you have an explosion... That's a lot of power. That's a very high amount of power. And uh, once again, uh, what we keep in mind is that the total amount of energy that's involved is still going to be the same. The amount of energy before and after the change is still the same. What's different is where that energy is or what kind of energy we're talking about. So uh, if we talk about the, the food energy stored and the calories you consume in that chocolate chip cookie, um, that's one form of energy. If you convert that into energy of you running away from the bear, uh, that's a different form of energy. And the quicker you do that, um, the less time it takes to convert that cookie into you running, uh, the more powerful you are. Um, so a real nice example of this, what I think of this, is, uh, is which the sun. 
Uh, the sun is a very hot object. Uh, later on, we'll talk about, I'll talk about, we'll talk about a little bit too, um, how that heat is generated. Um, it turns out to be a pretty recent discovery. Um, and that heat from the sun, uh, we uh, observe it mostly as light, light energy. Um, it warms the earth. In fact, delivers almost all the energy we have on earth uh, through the emptiness of space. And even that, how that happens is kind of a neat, uh, a neat little story for later. Almost all the energy we use ultimately has derived from the sun. Um, uh, the coal and oil, the fossil fuels are just uh, energy absorbed by plants mostly um, that's compressed and stored in the form of coal or gas or hydrocarbons uh, deep under the earth. And then uh, we release that energy and convert it to some other kind of form. Um, the food we eat, all the food we eat, uh, the energy comes from uh, ultimately photosynthesis. Uh, the sun um, giving energy to, to plants. Um, Animals come and eat the plants, uh, or fish come and eat the whatever fish eat. Um, and even if we eat animals that eat other animals, or eat, eat the animals that eat the plants, uh, the ultimate source of that energy uh, is uh, is the sun. Um, if we talk about wind energy, uh, the winds blow uh, because the sun warms air and causes these differences in air pressure that uh, that we see as wind, as the air flows from one place to another place. Um, water power is the same uh, kind of source of energy. Um, the water we use uh, that comes down a, a waterfall or across a dam, um, it has to be heated up by the sun, uh, brought into the air, uh, and then released as rain. So that energy that, uh, that we use in hydropower comes from the sun. The only exception uh, really is anything that's uh, derived from nuclear energy. Um, and nuclear power, turns out, comes from, well, a previous version of the sun. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit uh, a little bit later. But it's a neat thing to ponder that uh, all the energy we use, uh, almost no matter where it comes from, ultimately comes from uh, comes from the sun. All right. So I'm going to do a little example. An example uh, has to do with uh, taking this uh, power plant, a nuclear power plant, and uh, replacing it uh, with solar panels. And so over here, uh, I've got kind of an idea. Uh, someone says, hey, you might live in a place called Springfield. There might be a typical nuclear power plant there, and you might, uh, it might occur to you that the nuclear power plant has some issues like safety, and that uh, we'd be better off getting rid of it and replacing it with, uh, with solar panels. So that we use solar energy instead of nuclear power to uh, power our town, to provide the energy uh, in a short amount of time that the city might happen to need. Um, and so physics can help us, or the tools of physics can help us uh, answer the question, is this a reasonable thing to do, or is this something that uh, is not going to be possible? Uh, given